Welcome to our latest episode of GSB TV, uh, talking about digital marketing topics. I'm Edwin Bevins, and I'm here with Ed Fox, Hi. our webmaster, etc. extraordinaire. <laughs> you doing all right today, Ed? So far. Yeah, and today we are talking about content marketing. We want to talk about uh, you know, what it is, how to use it, the best things you can do with it. Yeah, well, and with that said, Bevins, why don't you just go ahead and get into it. Tell us uh, what is content marketing. So content marketing, if you've never done it before, uh, it's something really where you are bringing people to you. You know, as opposed to traditional advertising marketing is about going to where people are. Um, you know, so they're just driving along the road to work and suddenly there's a billboard that they see with your business. They're watching their favorite TV show, trying to find out who the murderer is, commercial. You know, the, the, the business is intruding in a way into the person's life. Whereas a, in, uh, content marketing really is a customer is looking for information about something. They want to know an answer to a question. And your business basically gives that answer. And so that builds your trust and credibility. And then ultimately when that person is looking to do business, they end up coming to you. Um, so it's, it's a long-term strategy where you're trying to really move your business to the top of the mind of a prospect or client, customer, so that when their need arises, they know that you know what you're doing, you're a smart person, your business is good business, you help people, and so they come to you. So it's really basically providing educational resources and topics to help your potential customers, help people out there, and, and, and bring you top of mind. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. And the nice, one of the great things is that you're creating a, a warmer market in a way, because these are people who, they already are kind of, there's something that's interesting to them about what you're doing. You know, they're looking for something. You know, there, it's not just thrown out to everybody. There's at least some level of they have a need, and you know, you're trying to anticipate it rather than telling them what they need. Right, and show them that you're you're the expert on the on the subject. That's exactly it. Perfect. Well, uh, why don't you tell us some ways to utilize content marketing online? Yeah. So I mean, there's I'd say there's three major ways, um, and so the first one is to share content that you own on your own websites or social media channels. So you know, you set up a website and you have a blog on there. And so on that blog, you can post articles or maybe you post a video on YouTube. And you know, this is stuff that's, that's you're doing, it's in your name, everything is connected to you so that when they're finding this stuff, they're finding it on your pages. Uh, a second way to do it is, is guest posting. So this is where you reach out to a, another entity, a website, a publisher of some sort that has a big audience and you share you know, your content on their site so that the people who are already going to this publisher, this other company for information, they find your stuff right alongside it. Um, and so that's, that's a great way to reach a new audience that doesn't know who you are, but that is at a certain place that's compatible with what you're doing. And then the third format is really um, kind of a follow-up to the, to the first two, and that's a, a re-engagement policy, which is where somebody has already contacted you in some way, maybe they've visited your website and read some articles, and so you've you know, retargeted them on, on Google or with some content. Or maybe they've gone to your website and they've given you an email address for something. So you start sending them your email newsletter. And so they're getting new things, new content that's pushed out a little more towards them, but in a way, you know, they very much have opted in in a certain way. Oh, very, very cool. Well, <clears throat> you know, I know that there are tons and tons of uh, you know, various formats uh, for you to push out content marketing, but um, you know, for sake of time, can you go over some of the, com <laughs> the most common? It's just, just a, <laughs> we'll just do just a few. <laughs> right, I mean, there's, there's almost an infinite number of ways you can do this, really. I mean, it's how creative are you? What ways can you think of? You know, one of the most common is definitely writing articles. You know, I think now it is blog posts is kind of the way, sure. you know, a lot of people do it. A lot so many businesses on one of the main sites pages they have to set up on their website is their company blog and you know on that blog they might be sharing some news about their company maybe they're sharing some industry trends um, they're bragging about some awards they've won or maybe they start sharing some more educational posts so you know what does this term mean that's in our industry or what's the difference between x and y you know why should i choose x instead of y or you know, where are the times when each of these is right? And so you're trying to educate your customers really in these articles a lot of times, either about your own company or just about parts of your industry. 
Um, another one is sharing videos. You know, you could post those. That's what YouTube is really there for. You know, you post a video to YouTube, you can share it on your own site, send it out on social. Those things can, um, you know, be found easily and spread all over the place. Um, another option is, and this gets back to that re-engagement point we were making, which is that you can set up white papers and ebooks on your website for people to find. So maybe they're really interested in a topic and it's a little more in depth. And this is, you know, kind of a signal that this person's a little more of a serious prospect. So what you do is you might, um, you know, write a, an in-depth white paper or ebook, put it on your website and make it available for people who want to opt in. Yeah, and that's actually, uh, there's a great point to be made there. You can also use those types of things for uh, lead generation. So you have a, a white paper, for instance, top, you know, top 10 tips for social media marketing, for instance. Um, a lot of people are going to be interested. They want the information. Give it to them for free. Educate them. But require that they give you some information in order to download it. Put a simple sign-up form on there. Give me your name, your email, maybe even a phone number. Um, after they put that in, submit it, send it to them via email. Have that information drop into a, a drip marketing campaign or even come into something like your CRM or Salesforce where you can then follow up with them, call them, turn that person into a customer. That's, that's absolutely right. Another format that people can really use is you know, creating infographics, especially if you're doing something that kind of can be expressed visually. Um, infographics are really easy to share. People love them because they don't have to, let's just say, they don't have to read as much. <laughs> um, you know, it's something you can kind of look at and, and visually digest the information that's trying to be conveyed. Um, another option that, that I really love is um, doing podcasts. So you can, this is a way you can show your own expertise and really build a relationship even with someone you've never met before just because they listen to your podcast. Um, I can just say from experience, you know, I listen to a lot of writing podcasts as our staff writer and, you know, these, they share advice, you know, how to, what's the best way to write this, what's the best way to do that. And whenever somebody comes with a, a writing need, I've, you know, I've referred those businesses to people who have copywriting needs, for instance, that I can't do. You know, and I say, hey, this is, these people really know their stuff and they've, they're smart, they're good people, you'll like working with them. And I've never done business with them, but from their podcast, I've gotten to know them and their business. And it's a great way to, to really generate goodwill. Well, you know, now we know what content marketing is. We know how to utilize it and we know a handful <laughs> of, of the different formats that it has, but there has to be a right and a wrong way to push it out, to get it out to your audience, to get it on your website, uh, to put it on YouTube. Well, why don't you go over some of the best practices? Yeah, one of the things I think is really important is having a consistent schedule. Um, you don't want to be somebody who just posts so infrequently that nobody ever knows whether there's gonna be anything on your website. You know, if you post three articles this week and then you disappear for four months and then suddenly you start writing again, um, people who discovered you in that first run are probably long gone because they were checking back for months and there was nothing. That could do more harm than good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what you want to have is, is a consistent schedule. You know, I'm going to post once a week. You know, if you're ambitious, I'm going to post daily. You know, maybe it's, every, I mean, you can, it can even be an occasional thing. It could even be every other week. As long as people know what to expect and you're consistent about it, then people will forgive pretty much any gap as long as it's what they're expecting. So you have to be consistent. It can't just be a lot, nothing, 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 and then a lot again. It's, it's gotta be a steady, consistent pace so that people keep coming back and they know when to come back. Um, another thing is that when you're writing headlines, um, you want people to, to find these things. You know, They might get shared on social media, so people aren't necessarily coming for them the way that it's organically found. So you, know, you got to have to have a headline that people will see and be interested in. So it needs to be kind of clear and concise. It's got to be short enough that people can, that someone can just look at a headline and they know, all right, this is what this article is about. Either I'm looking for this or I'm not looking for this. And it needs to be short enough that it's not, you know, they're not trying to figure out what you're trying to say. Um, you want this to be, you know, I think a good rule of thumb, I've heard a lot of different advice, you know, but around 50 characters or so, which tends to work out to 10 to 12 words roughly. Uh, is kind of a good, like, don't really go too much beyond that unless you are really certain about what you're doing. And then one last best practice I just want to bring up is make sure you have a way to measure your ROI 
on what you're doing because that's one of the things uh, in surveys, a lot of companies have found that they're putting these content marketing practices in, into place, but a lot of businesses don't really know what they're getting out of it um, because they're really doing a poor job of tracking um, and measuring because they don't even know what their goals are. So no, you, know, you have to set a goal. Is it that I'm trying to drive sales? Am I trying to increase brand awareness? Know what your goal is and then figure out a couple metrics that you can check to know that it's working or not. Because if you're trying to generate sales and nothing's happening, you know, you've got to figure out why. So you need to check, have something to look at so set, that you know what you're getting. Set those data points, look at those data points. The answers are in the numbers. It's something that Fran has beat into us over <laughs> as long as I've been here. That's so, right. Yeah, always check your numbers and, and know where you're going from there. Well, wonderful. Do you have anything else? Are we you know, I think, uh, I think that pretty much covers perfect. it, right? Yeah. So hope everybody has a great week and we will be back with more GSB TV next week.